Hello, what's up, guys? Um, welcome to another episode of Hobby Research uh, Weekly Market Chat. I'm your host today. I'm Johnny. Today we also have Ben and also Stephanie. Hey, Ben. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, Johnny. How are you doing? Hi. Yeah. Very good. Really good. Yeah. Um, let's go through the topics that we're gonna discuss today. First of all, uh, same same stuff. We look at the market. Let's see how it. It's going right now. I think there's a pump and everybody got excited and that's good news. And let's see how the pump will continue or if it's a bull trap or something that we can discuss. And then um, and then we're gonna have a macro overview. Let's see how DXY performs and also the 10 year treasury yield. And later on, uh, there has been some controversies about Gemini Earn and Genesis. A lot of people are saying that they're going they they're going bankrupt, and um, I I think there are a lot of FUDs out there, and it's better to uh, you know just debunk these myths and also FUDs. Let's look at the facts and get a, a clearer and better picture of what's going on in the market, and you know just better position ourselves at better places, and and then at the end we're gonna have some on chain indicators. And uh, we're gonna go to Glassnow and I'm gonna share some uh, indicators with you guys. So, um, yeah, can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I'm on the page of the liquidity, right? Uh, yes, let's look at the reverse repo. Um, for some of you who might not know what this is, it's actually a tool used by the Federal Reserve to, to absorb and withdraw liquidity from the market. And if it's going down and that's good for the market, it's good for risky assets. It's good for equities because uh, money is being circulated back into uh, other places instead of you know being sucked and pocked with uh, the reverse repo. And I think it is making lower low and lower low and lower high, lower low for, you know, for some time already since the beginning of October and we definitely are seeing a, a clear downtrend in the reduction in the overnight reverse repo. That's very good. If we look at the inverted RLP versus big contract, the reason why we, we, we invert the reverse repo is that uh, it poses a negative correlation to the performance of big consensus. It's you know doing the contrary thing as Bitcoin, as Bitcoin does, it removes liquidity from the market. And that's, that's why when it goes down, Bitcoin goes up. If it goes up, Bitcoin goes down. And if we invert it, we're going to see a positive correlation here. So uh, currently we are observing, we, we just spotted a divergence here. Uh, if you can see my mouse here. Yeah. Inverted repo goes up while Bitcoin goes down. And that's actually, you know, a big signal for us to to realize that maybe Bitcoin's gonna embrace a, a liquidity comeback, a, a pump. And we, we see, right? We, we just saw it. The pump was very nice. It bounced from the low of previous low, uh, trading at like maybe 16K, bounced very nicely. And I would like to show you the chart. Let's go through the chart. Let's look at the chart and it's definitely a very you know exciting thing to see bitcoin coming back and you know just looking at a four hour chart and then we are seeing that bitcoin just bounced from uh 15 15k and 500 and you know some other coins some other coins outperform bitcoin for example bmb Right, I think it's definitely, uh, it's definitely you. You, I, I think you shared the news with me today. You know, the BNB just listed the Hulk token, right? Yes, and uh, in their launchpad mechanism, the the BNB holders can uh, get the Hulk token. So that's the reason why BNB uh increased this day today and. Uh, uh, and uh, actually, I think the the cryptocurrency 
has increased today because of the uh um the market has the uh been uh been back to the normal way because the, um last week the um the FTX accident and the uh the exchange has hacked by a hacker and uh, many people are afraid of uh, the uh, Bitcoin and uh, um Ethereum will um will 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 be sold by the hackers so the um so the the, the market isn't uh wasn't right last week but uh, this week we think um we we could uh, uh hope that the um market will will uh will better this week yeah Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. You know, listing hope they, they they definitely a you know a sell into news event and also a pump to be triggered. And if we look at Ethereum right now, I think we are you know we testing the previous low and it's a resistance area here. So probably I think it's it has a high tendency to you know we test the previous low one k, you know. Not financial advice, though. You know, just some my personal opinion, and some, uh, some insights, or yeah. You know, Bitcoin right now. I think, uh, same thing. I think it's gonna, you know, pull back a little bit, and it's pumped over. Let's check it out. Uh, six percent. So, um, pretty good week, and if we go back to. Wait a minute. To the inverted RPA versus Bitcoin chart, yeah, here. And you know, uh, next time we we see a similar divergence there, and then uh, I think it's a great opportunity to uh, to ape in by the dip and sell into uh, the pump, and also sell into news if there's any. So. We're gonna also look at the XY. So wait a minute. Let me get back to the chart. Uh yeah, we're looking at the XY. What do you think about the XY right now, Ben? Um, I think for the past few days, uh, the investors are really very cautious right now because over the weekends, on the past maybe one week, you know, a lot of Fed officials are coming out to say. I think uh, like they are more leaning to, they are more dovish right now. I think that they are actually looking at a 50 basis point hike rather than the initial uh, 75 basis point hike uh, one month ago. So no one month ago, uh, those uh, previous, I think October CPI wasn't really seen, right? So October CPI was you know, really good, uh, like below expectation, I think 7.7. Of expectation of eight percent, so I think market uh, really varied from there. Uh, so with the expectation that the Feds will actually uh be more uh in loose with their monetary policy, meaning that they will be so aggressive with their hikes. So right now, uh, the Feds are coming up to say, okay, we are looking at a uh, fifty basis point hike, but uh, it will be, I mean, uh. The high interest rate environment will continue for a longer period of time. So because right right now the market is expecting like uh for maybe three quarters of 2023, the uh, interest rate will remain elevated at around five percent. So uh but uh it might be even longer. So it will sort of uh sort of like prevent the DXY for actually going down because prevents uh I mean a high interest rate environment will mean that uh the, the US dollar will be higher so the XY will be higher. Right. So if interest rate will continue to you know uh maintain an elevated uh uh elevated percentage over a long period of time, 
uh, DXY is going to be uh, pretty strong for some time, unless uh, no tomorrow's is uh, the Fed's FOMC meeting. Uh, I mean, the mid is this. I think it's tonight. Uh, I think it's around six hours time. So uh, I think a lot of investors uh, on market market participants, they are looking at what the Fed's discussed, uh, I think, two or three weeks ago during the Fed's meeting. Uh, because uh, whatever that the Feds are talking right now, they are really like hawkish. Like uh, please, it's like telling us not to be very optimistic with the market. So hence, uh, and also right now it's like you know World Cup season, we are towards the end of the year. Uh, trading volume will tend to be more muted because a lot of investors will be like uh, you know they will unwind the position for the holiday season before they come back in uh, in January. So uh, right now, uh, there, I don't think there will be very huge uh, price movements uh, because uh, firstly, there's not a, not a lot of people looking at it, uh, less people investing or trading. And uh, yeah. So if if tonight's uh, FOSC meeting is more hawkish, uh, if it because I think the next FOMC meeting will be, I think it's two weeks time, if I'm not wrong, or oh, three weeks time. So I think it will be before, it will be after the the November's uh CPI data. So I think everything depends on that because employment rate is still good, uh, labor market is still pretty strong. Despite you know, four seventy five basis point rate hikes, the Fed has the bullets to be hawkish. Uh, because inflation is still at seven point seven percent, is way above their two percent target. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. And definitely going to pay attention to the minutes tonight. I think uh, you meant six hours later, right? Yeah, I think it's around 2, 8, 2 3 a.m. Uh, GMT yeah. plus 8. Yeah. By then, I think we can, you know, have a better understanding or, you know, predicting the direction of the next rate hikes, whether um, it's going to get more hawkish or dovish. And uh, let's get, get back to the cryptos, to the crypto. <laughs> And um, there are not a lot of people saying uh, GBTC going to dissolve uh, since Genesis may have solvency issues. They're going to, you know, going to get insolvent. And then uh, there is also a possibility that Grayscale will dissolve GBTC. And um, a lot of people are very worried because uh, uh, DCG, the, uh, the, parent, the parent company of uh, Grayscale and also Genesis is the largest holder of GBTC shares. Uh, they are holding like 64, uh, I think uh, 640k Bitcoin uh, they're holding. And that's a huge position. And if they're going to dissolve GBTC, that will be disastrous for, for Bitcoin, also the whole crypto community. Because I don't think the current market has the liquidity to absorb such a enormous selling pressure, and a lot of people are worried. But you know, um, we're going to look at the facts whether uh, Grayscale will dissolve GBC because I discussed with Benz and also Stephanie, and uh, we tend to think that this is just a FUD because um, uh, I think we should get to the facts of the fundamentals of. You know the reg because GBTC is being regulated, and we're gonna check that if GBTC can be sold to Bitcoin, and if Grayscale will resolve to the solution, and the tendency of this going this way is is very low. So, um, so first of all, I think we should you know uh, get to the definition of GBTC. Some things you need to know. Uh, credits to look on chain. Um, they they clarify these facts very clearly, and 
uh, I definitely encourage you to, you know, if you are interested to finding finding more about GBC and you can you can just go through these tweets. I think they are very informative and knowledgeable and helpful to uh, to learn more about GBC thing. So firstly, uh, GBC is a listed trust fund regulated by the US Securities and also Exchange Commission, so the SEC so-called. And then Grayscale charges GBTC at an annual management fee of 2%. So Grayscale basically is a asset management, you know, the role is similar to being an asset manager, managing GBT shares. And people can use USD or Bitcoin, and then they're going to convert to GBTC accordingly, and then they're going to deposit their cash into Grayscale, or they're going to deposit the Bitcoin into Grayscale. And then Grayscale will then use your Bitcoin and transfer to Coinbase, I'm sorry, not use a Bitcoin. They're just gonna keep your Bitcoin in the Coinbase custody. So basically, Grayscale's custodian is Coinbase, okay? So it's pretty safe. So Coinbase keeps the Bitcoin. And I think there was also some rumors going on saying uh, DCG, uh, the parent company of Grayscale and also uh, Genesis refused to disclose their uh their wallet address uh kept by Coinbase and uh they would re they refuse to disclose it because of some I think there's some confidential business information they 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 were not very uh open to to share with outsiders and that triggered a lot of FUD in the market <laughs> but uh but you know it's uh later Coinbase clarified that uh they actually keep the Bitcoin, they are keeping Bitcoin and and it's actually safe. So a lot of FUD there. So uh, for some of you who might, you know, want to know more about how GPC works and also to wonder why GPC is trading at a positive at a positive premium or a negative premium. So currently at a negative premium relative to Bitcoin. So let me just break it down for you guys. So um for investors who invested in GBC, they could not convert their GBC shares to Bitcoin according to the uh, regulation of the SEC because it's regulated and the rules are like that. You can only buy GBC with USD or Bitcoin, but you cannot get back your Bitcoin once you get the GBC shares. And that's a rule. So uh, when the demand for GBC is very large, it's very huge. And then a lot of people will tend to, you know, trade this premium of the increasing demand. So people are going to buy Bitcoin and then they're going to deposit Bitcoin in Grayscale to get some GPC. So later on when Bitcoin is surging, is pumping, and then the huge demand for GPC will cause the, the price of GPC to rise even higher than the price of Bitcoin. So that, you know, vice versa, same case, when Bitcoin is trending down, there will be a, a negative premium because people will just dump the GBC when, when because not, Bitcoin is not performing well. And uh, there also tends to be a lot of selling pressure. And since GBC cannot be converted to Bitcoin, some people might panic. And then sometimes GBC shares uh, can be trading at a negative discount i would say so right now we are seeing a very big discount it's like 50 percent 50 50 percent and more and that's a huge discount so uh some investor would treat it as a buying opportunity for example kv wood um, alk invest they are buying millions of shares of uh first comp base and also they are buying a lot of gbtc shares might be they spotted the opportunity to buy the bitcoin dip uh, at this moment, buying GPT shares uh, definitely, you know, cheaper than purchasing Bitcoin, right? And some people just saw the took the opportunity and they, they and they went with GPTC. So um, also want to clarify something that um, uh, that's getting around with Genesis. As we know that Genesis is a lending and borrowing 
uh, company in crypto is doing a lot uh, in institutional lending and in institutional borrowing. And they are actually tied to Gemini. Let me just get to the next point. So uh, the rumors actually, the rumors actually also, also, uh, also, you know, stick to Gemini since uh, Gemini uh, pulls the withdrawal of Gemini Earn, and some 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 people out there saying that Gemini Earn uh, lends the the funds in Gemini Earn to Genesis, and Genesis just uh, ruined it, ruined the funds in FTX or maybe 3AZ before in the Luna collapse. And they lack liquidity now. And Gemini, uh, and, and I think in the Twitter, uh, Gemini Claire uh, just, just tweeted that they were actively talking to Genesis about getting the funds of their users, getting back the funds of their users. And that's a pretty big red flag since we just uh, went through the, the, the tragedy of you know the FTX FTX thing and other people are getting really really burnt in this thing and now we have this this um, I think another maybe implosion 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 event and a lot of people are very worried. So, uh, but one thing that um, uh, we we actually uh, found out is that although Genesis ruined the funds uh the funds were from gemini earn um but we, uh, that that's bad for gemini investors say goodbye to gemini earn but uh as for gbdc shares they are not related although uh the grayscale is the uh, dcg is the parent company of grayscale and also genesis uh, they are different entities different institutions and uh, we don't think that DCG will result to dissolving GPTC, uh, GPTC trust to get more liquidity. I think this possibility is really low. And so that, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm just saying, uh, no need to worry about GPTC dissolving GPTC trust. That's a, you know, I think that's a small probability of that happening. So, um, I would also like to invite Ben and Stephanie to you know to 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 tell to tell our audience what do you think about think about this this thing you know Gemini Earn Genesis Grayscale. Well, uh, uh, I think no matter what the price of GBTC is, um, uh, it doesn't affect Grayscale's continued collection of high trust management fees. And you have already read on the uh, slides that um, the according to the current market of Bitcoin, uh, Grayscale charges about uh, 200 million management fees per year. So um, Grayscale is really a valuable uh, company for the um, DCG. So I think um, we do not need to worry about the grayscale. scale. And, um, and I want to say that why people will buy the, uh, the GPTC um, because uh, I think there are three reasons for that. Um, why investors buy shares in the grayscale Bitcoin trust instead of buying Bitcoin directly. Um, the first reason is that uh, investing in a Bitcoin trust allows people to gain access to Bitcoin without worrying about how to store Bitcoin, uh, whether it will touch the law and how to pay taxes. and. Uh, uh, the second is um, publicly traded Bitcoin trusts have various tax advantages. And uh, the other reason is that traditional investors can uh, invest in cryptocurrencies indirectly 
through uh, stock exchanges. So that's why GPTC is very useful for, uh, to many traditional investors. And uh, um, that's, um, but in the bear market and there's many products of uh, ETF. So uh, GPTC are not so popular now, but it is still useful. And, yeah, that's my opinions about um GPTC and the grey scale. Yeah, some uh so uh GPC shares definitely you know looks appealing to traditional finance institution because they can you know get their exposure in Bitcoin while they don't have to worry about uh storing the Bitcoin and you know GPC is a trust fund regulated by the SEC so. Uh, it comes with security and they don't have to worry about the regulation, um, you know, the stuff about uh, disputes going on with, with crypto in, in the U.S. And they just have to pay the management fee of 2%. And I think most of the hedge fund, you know, charge uh, more expensive than 2%. And, uh, you know, by sticking the Bitcoin in, in grayscale, uh, that would be a, a, a pretty good a secure option for traditional finances. Yeah, we raised some good points there. So uh, what do you think about it, Benz? What's your view on, uh, you know, people worrying about GPC shares? Firstly, uh, I totally agree with uh, Stephanie. Because uh, firstly, it's, uh, she said about uh, taxes. Uh, it's really true. No, uh, you can save uh, companies or individuals. You can save some money uh, through uh, investing uh, in ETFs rather than in GPDC rather than uh, in equities uh, stuff like that. And secondly, is uh, the soundness of uh, GPDC uh, is because of the mandate itself because uh, it's firstly it's regulated by the SEC. So they couldn't, uh, I would say they couldn't do anything to the fund or they couldn't move a bit, a Bitcoin that they're holding uh, without the consent of the investors. Right? And, and one part of the mandate of GBDC is uh, Investors from GBDC, they could not uh, redeem their GBDC to BDC or to cash uh, through Grayscale. So they have to uh, trade or sell their GBDC uh, in the open market, which is OTC. So this is the reason why uh, there is a huge uh, discount right now, which is around 40 to 50%. Relative to this is right? Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, it could be a buying opportunity because that would be like well, judging from the current BC prices is like around eight thousand or nine thousand USD compared to current fifteen thousand. So it's definitely a good buy. And all the reason why I would think that you know, there's a huge discount is because uh institutions. Uh, or during the bear market, especially uh, the start of the first bear market since 2020, yeah, 20, no, 2019, uh, 2020, sorry, 2020, uh, which is happened in May, you know, GBDC starts to uh, depend from the BDC prices. So uh, from there, I think a lot of institutions, they start to offload their GBDC. Hence, uh, everything just uh goes spiral down to uh to the current uh, discount. However, uh, Johnny did mention about like uh no Genesis and uh uh Grayscale. They are two different entities, right? So if it's like two different entities, uh, I think even though they are parent company, is still like DCG. Uh, they still maintain uh at arm's length. Meaning that uh, if, uh, for example, uh, 
Gemini, I mean, uh, if Genesis were to borrow money or were to lend money to DCG, uh, interest rates will be uh will be charged based on the amount they borrow rather than it's a uh, outright transfer of assets. This is one reason why it's you know you keep at arm's length because they are yeah. two separate companies. So and Genesis, uh, you know we I think everybody knows the Genesis. Uh, is subsidiary. Uh, everything is uh separated from this UG. So, uh, so if Genesis were to like encounter bankruptcy, uh, only Genesis would be uh bankrupt. Uh, this UG won't be bankrupt. Uh, Space will be bankrupt. There is no need for this UG to liquidate GBC to save Genesis because they have no obligations to do that because. They are two separate entities. Uh, yeah, this this might be important. Yeah, yeah, Ben, that's right. I think last week, Genesis uh, tweeted that they uh, and also they 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 clarified that they were seeking liquidity from other investors, saviors, and Binance we refused to to inject liquidity into Genesis. Okay, to buy Genesis. Binance is not very interested in doing so. And uh, people are speculating the reason why Binance refused to support uh, liquidity for Genesis because, uh, you know, suspicious might not, might, not, might not look very good to Binance. And, and because right now we can't see uh, the financial statements of Genesis and we really, really don't know how big the hole is in the balance sheet, right? And last week they, they said they, they are looking for one, I think that's one billion, am I right? Am I right, Ben? I think it's one yeah. billion liquidity. And you know, it's, it's after this tweet. So let's go through this tweet. So Genesis recognized how challenging the past week has been due to the FTX thing. And then uh they admitted that they were in a difficult situation so uh too long didn't work i just um, made a summary genesis admitted that they were in a difficult situation because ftx has created unprecedented market turmoil resulting in a normal withdrawal regrets so people are starting to redeem uh the loan they offer to genesis and also uh, people are withdrawing funds from Genesis because of a fear, right? Because they are afraid that Genesis is going to, uh, they think that Genesis has exposure to FTX, which is true. And also Genesis had some bad news back in May. They also had exposure to 3AC. They lent money to 3AC and 3AC defaulted. And Genesis found shit it hurt very well, hurt very badly, I'm sorry. And then they tweeted that they suspended the withdrawal functions. And also they were working very actively to explore all possible options to, to, to get the liquidity back. And, and, you know, and I also want to show you the Gemini earn, Gemini earn tweet. So it's really interesting. Look at this. Update for customers. We continue to work with Genesis Global Capital lending partner of Earn and its parent company DCG to find a solution for Earn users to redeem their funds. Oh, that's that means that you, uh, the funds in Gemini Earn, if you stick your money in Gemini Earn, you cannot get it back now. So that's a very bad news. And they are working very hard to in this challenging time to help their customers get back their funds. Really bad news. And this is where the FUD came out of. So people read the tweets of Genesis and also Gemini Earn, two very big institutions doing lending and borrowing services. And then all of a sudden they said, oh, we had some liquidity problem here. We might get you so thin. And, and, and then people started panic. And by the way, I want to show you a very funny tweet i think i just saw down there first of all every company goes like this 
we had no exposure to FTX and Alameda. And then <laughs> after they're getting worked, they're going to say, we had some exposure, but liquidity remains functional. As long as their users or their clients started withdrawing funds and then they're going to just suspend withdrawals. And then if they cannot raise liquidity from other investors, they're going to file for bankruptcy. Four major steps to bankruptcy. That's pathetic. Right? <laughs> it's actually very, very, you know, funny. People joke on this. However, I feel also very sorry for those who put their money on Gemini Earn and also uh, on Genesis. That's a very bad news. But, you know, after going through this event, I think, um, Later on, these institutions will be more regulated in a positive way, right? Because they get wrecked once. And the next time, I, I think they won't make the same mistake. Like, uh, without very straight and also appropriate risk management, that's a fatal mistake for all asset managing companies. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree because uh, normally, uh, I mean, for those who you know just started crypto or trading crypto, uh, when you when you see like uh no centralized exchanges, you have like earn programs like Gemini Earn, for example. Uh, sometimes you have to do your own reading, uh, because the earn might be uh the exchange using your money to lend it to yeah to the to the borrowers. So it can be institutions like Genesis, it can be institutions like um you no know, uh sovereign wealth funds and so on and so forth. Um uh, earn can be I think in my opinion can be two things. It can be a lending and borrowing uh product. Another one is a staking product. So uh staking as in uh the centralized exchange will use your tokens. To stack it for you on chain, or uh, maybe it could be on uh on the project website itself, project itself where you can earn uh some uh tokens uh although the AP one may not be high, but at least you know that not safe unless uh the project were to fail or there might be an uh, impermanent loss and stuff like that. Uh, it is normal for you to actually. Experience impermanent, impermanent loss, but uh, I think uh, you have to know what you are doing. Even uh, sometimes centralized exchange may be a risk, you know. So please do your own reading. It can be staking, it can be borrowing lending, but I'll prefer a staking uh, product because it is somewhat safer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks, Ben, for the tips. And um, also, do you have any news, any updates on uh, the, you know, on Genesis raising liquidity? I think they failed, right? Right now, I, I, I have not uh, come across any news saying some investors actually uh, provided liquidity in Genesis. DCG, I think DCG uh, already injected 1.4 billion into genesis already right i think two months two two weeks before let me just uh get that get that news you heard of that Benz? i'm not sure whether dcg in injected uh, additional funds uh two, uh two weeks prior uh, however uh yeah. if I, I mean like if the parent company knows that you know i'm you're going bankrupt uh yeah. i wouldn't I would inject one billion, you know, yeah. uh, right? One billion, yeah, one billion. Genesis six, one billion loan from DCG prior to halting withdrawals. Uh, yes. So yeah, so it's uh, great scale investments in the spotlight for owing Genesis one billion, and then this news came before Genesis suspended their withdrawal, and right now they they you know. They're trying to raise five hundred million instead of instead of instead of one one billion, right? So 
Genesis raise 580. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, raising 500 million for uh, this new crypto funds. Top executives from Genesis and Galaxy raising 5 million funds. I don't think, I, I, I don't know if it's related to the liquidity crunch, uh, you know, faced by Genesis or, or, or what. They're going to launch a new crypto fund. So what does it mean? They're going to start a new company? What about a, a fund what? to actually uh, help them with their liquidity problem since uh, the 3 EC incident? Yeah. yeah. But uh, according to what I read this morning, uh, I think that after uh, Binance withdrew from uh, sort of like billing out Genesis, yeah. uh, I think Genesis are still in talks with, uh, are still in talks with, I think, another company. Okay. Uh, with regards to uh, what whether they can fund it, I think it's a hedge fund. Yeah. Uh, but you no, know, it comes. It's it's so surprised. Like in, just now, you showed me the the clown uh meme. Right? It, it it's like so funny. It's like uh, when everything was before everything blows up. You know, the companies was reaffirming the investors. Everything's all right. Equity is all right. Then after that, oh, we have a small hole and everything is <laughs> fine. Then after that, they say, okay, uh, it's 175 million. Uh, and I mean, to, to this company, 175 million is nothing, right? But after that, uh, one week later, it's like, oh, we have a hole of 1.1 million or billion dollars. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I'm like, what, what happened to, you know, this company being transparent? Yeah. yeah and another yeah. problem is with like Gemini is uh, this 175, 175 million uh, of customers fund I think as Gemini as a huge I mean it, it's quite a reasonable it's quite, quite a big exchange I think they are like third and fourth uh, after Coinbase so um, I think that they shouldn't have this kind of problem with uh, I mean, repaying their customers uh, yeah, with their funds because uh, they have, I think they have enough liquidity to do that. However, uh, of course they would want to you know, uh, get some money back from Genesis, but if they were not they were to not like get back funds from the customers, the customers would definitely sue them and the customers will Solve, get your money back one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, 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 yeah, definitely we view a lot of risk taking into this uh, lending and borrowing companies, although they offer is maybe attractive yields if you lend them money, but the risk uh, will be paid by you. And, um, you know, another lesson learned. But uh, the good thing is that we don't have to worry about uh, DCG dumping their Ghibli shares to raise liquidity for Genesis. I think this, uh, this, you know, the probability of this happening is very small. So we don't have to worry about that. And let's follow up, uh, you know, since the hack, FTX hacker hacked the funds of customers in FTX and then they stole the fund and then the hacker drained the accounts and they sold EVE for RAM BDC and the FTX hacker was trying to benefit, was trying to take profit from dumping EVE. How did they do that? So I uh, just look at they uh, look at the some transactions here. So the hacker saw a lot of Ethereum and the hacker exchanged Ethereum for RAM BTC. And by doing so, the hacker also sent funds to exchanges 
to short Ethereum while they dump Ethereum for rent BTC. And they even deployed some bots for arbitraging, for arbitraging the, the RAM BTC and also web BTC. There will be a there will be a the discrepancy in, in their in their prices depending because the supply of WTC will be will be will bigger and the demand for RAM BTC is large since the hacker dumped a lot of BTC to get RAM BTC. And so uh, the ultimate goal of this hacker, you know, other people uh, propose that the hacker might try to exit into BTC mainnet because they, they started to, to get a lot of RAM BTC and, you know, ultimately they would just want to get BTC and stick to their, to their stacking tools, of, you know, stacking BTC. Okay, so um, despite the hackers dumping uh, the Ethereum asset, we we'll also have to you know pay attention to the liquidation going on with Alameda's assets. Uh, since Alameda uh, had a lot of loans on on uh, with a lot of you know fund borrowers, and now a lot of assets from Alameda are going to be liquidated. For example, DYDX, Ethereum, Keep, etc., including Bybit and also Sushi, all these altcoins are getting dumped by liquidators to you know, just trying to get back their, their funds and definitely have to pay attention to this altcoin. So if you have a significant amount of holdings in these altcoins, I suggest you to uh, just uh, just go to a uh, local chain and also you can search this tweet and then you can get the address of this uh, uh, liquidator and then you can see uh, their token holdings and you know just from run them before they dump their tokens so I think we also had a, a big thing going on today right Stephanie I think you talked to me uh, saying uh, some people, some shorter, big shorter. I think that's that's a well uh, was trying to benefit from dumping CLV, right? The curve token. Yes, just happened yesterday. Yeah. And uh, someone learned, um, for, at the first time, someone learned twenty million on CLV tokens from lending protocol. Avi and followed by another ten million CRV at uh almost uh, uh thirteen minutes later for a total of thirteen million CRV and um uh, transferred ten million CRV into um OKX exchange three times and. Uh, uh, for the for the traders, uh, it uh, in total has borrowed uh nineteen two million CRV token, uh was approximately uh thirteen thirteen thirty nine million dollars. So, uh, it uh the this guy and uh, um, sell the CRV tokens and short it, and causes the CRV price dropped more than 20% like, uh, yesterday. Um, and uh, um, due to the reselling of short sellers, those who use CRV as collateral to borrow money are also under equation pressure. For example, the founders of Curve used the CRV as collateral to lend USDC. And at that time, he was on the um, verge of liquidation. So he quickly increased the collateral by uh, 20 million CRV. And uh, um, this morning, um, uh, due to the sharp rise in the price of CRV, um, the um, the guy who has 
um, 3.9 million USDC liquidated on every to buy CRV to repay the debt. So um, the, the curve is safe now and the price of CRV increased uh, almost uh, 15 uh, today. Yeah, oh. and I think it's, it's just uh, uh, some traders, uh, some trader to uh, want to get profit from the uh from short the CRV. Yeah. Uh. So basically, uh, a short seller, a, a short seller, maybe a well case. Uh, he had a lot of money, like forty million dollar in US dollar in USDC, and then the short seller took out a loan of CRV from RV, and then the short seller dumped all the CRV tokens, and before that. The short seller already opened a lot of short positions on centralized exchanges, trying to benefit from short selling CLV. I think uh, it's here, right? I think it happened uh, this morning. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah somewhere here. Uh, this hacker dumped a bunch of a tons of CLV tokens, trying to uh, benefit from short selling CLV. But later on, he got liquidated. <laughs> Short squeeze, right? And I think she, um, um, he or she didn't have enough money to short it. <laughs> All right, that's funny, but but if it if, if he you know really crashed the price of CRV, and then as you said, a lot of people who use CRV as collateral and took out loans from different places would be wrecked, and that would be another disaster. Yeah, I think, I think, uh. So in the end, of, in the end, did, did the the short seller uh, benefit from this strategy? Yeah, I think they. I think the short seller failed, right? Maybe I'm not. Maybe. I'm not sure. So okay. is there any news regarding the short seller whether he uh, he bet, he made some money off it or he? Uh, the, we 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 don't know if he took profit or not, but. Uh, they were saying that his positions were liquidated. So, yeah. so he tried to shot, uh, hoping that uh, uh, CRVs, uh, founders, uh, CRV on RV get liquidated, so it will go even lower. Yeah, yeah. Well, of and course, I think a lot of people's. A lot of people will try to defend the price of CLV because CLV is such the you know curve is such a good project and we couldn't let this happen. Yes, and I think a lot of projects like uh, CBX or Frex, uh, FXX, they are uh, the ones that you know they are the ones loading up a lot of CLV tokens for for their uh, for this could be for their uh, stakers can for other things so they are one of the biggest uh, crv holders so if the price were to go down like at the low very low levels right i think it's a great discount for them to buy up right yeah and and also uh i think it's i think it's part of a move uh i'm not sure whether uh whether it's insider or what because earlier today crv just uh uh announce their new stable point yeah this morning yeah so i think the timing is just too 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 nice right it could be insider i i'm not sure you know i'm always very sus you choose the, the wrong time to yeah. show to sammy <laughs> yeah it could be the 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 guy chose the wrong time to to shut sell or the founder found the right opportunity to uh, to kill the the short seller, initiates a short squeeze and then yeah, um, yeah, that's crazy, man. You know, so uh, you know, uh, in the end, I, I just want to bring up this chart, uh, developed by Willy Wu, a very good technician, uh, technical uh analyst in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And it proposed a CVD. I think I talked about it before, but I think some of our audience might not have heard about this model. 
I think this model has a very good accuracy in predicting Bitcoin port, Bitcoin volume. So uh, if we just zoom a little bit here, sorry, okay, just look at this bottom, okay. Uh, the CBDC is actually cumulative value coin days destroyed and this developed by Willy Wu, calibrated by uh, a constant of, I think that's 7 million or maybe, wait a minute here, CBDC here, yeah, 6 million. So uh, Willy Wu used a 6 million factor as a calibration and then it also took into account of uh, the realized price of uh, Bitcoin and it takes into account of uh, the time value and also the value of transaction at the time Bitcoin uh, and then uh, he developed this model and then uh, he uh, we, we, we tend to see that this model has been performing really good so uh, let me just zoom out zoom out a little bit so I, I would like to you know pull close uh, I think I need to reset. So wait a minute. So we zoom out auto scale. Oh, I'm sorry, reset access here. So if we, oh damn, reset access. So let me just zoom in here, okay. And we're we're pretty close to the CBDD value is fifteen k. 15k, 916k, almost 16k. So uh, might be the volume according to this model that this model might fail. That you know, uh, if we look back, the scale. Why? It's a scale. So if we look back historically in 2015, 2012. And then 2019, the purple line, we just look at the purple line, okay? So uh, the orange line is realized price, and we don't look at that. We also don't want to look at the top model and also the MVT. So just uh, just the purple line. And the red line, uh, the vertical red line here represents the halving event. So uh, make sure you check out this, this price model has been crazy accurate. <laughs> what do you think about this, Vince? Well, let's see a bottom here. Any comments, Vince? You mute the... Uh, I, I think yeah. this model looks like really, really yeah. good to... Yeah, looks pretty good. But yeah. you know, just a tiny reminder, is actually backward looking when we would develop this model. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. the calibration of 6 million can be fine tuned to catch the historical volumes, but you know, might, might or might not work next time or this time. Yeah. So because current, most, of this, yeah. most of these are like uh, back tested and yeah. uh, it's based on previous historical conditions, right? However, yeah. if we, this can be a model that you can use to consider, right? Mm -hmm. And you can you know, yeah. factor in maybe another nine more, nine more models. I think there's a lot of models out there. So yeah. if, 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 if it's like more than eight models are pointing at uh, yeah. five signal, for example, uh, I think yeah. uh, it's not, this is not investment advice, but you can you know, try or um, you can put some money that you can afford to yeah. lose. Once yeah. to invest in Bitcoin, if uh, you have some extra cash like, you know. but uh, I think if you because right now is uh we don't know whether it's really the bottom, but if it's not the bottom, then the FOMO comes in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So hopefully next time we have more time going through different models. Let's try to you know compare different models and see if we are in the bottom or not. Right, some models are pretty good. Okay, so um, uh, in the end, we have the Kenny Drop. Thank you for listening, and make sure you try to earn enough crystals and join the Kenny Drop event. We'll pick some lucky stars and give them one hundred worth with USDT.
So make sure you check SMS. You might be the lucky star. I hope that you will win the reward. And thank you for supporting and listening. So make sure you check out our um, our hobby research page. We have some excellent research papers there for reference. So you can keep updated to the market. And thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Stephanie, for you know for, for joining the conversation today. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah. Thank See you. you guys next time. See you next week. See you Bye. next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.